The only reason for FGM is to control the bodies and sexuality of women, to control their lives. Marie-Claire Moraldo was just nine when she underwent genital mutilation. I was thrown straight onto the ground. I had no time to realize what was happening to me. One woman held my arms, two others my legs, and the fourth one, she was the one who had the knife. Marie-Claire and her team help women who've suffered the same fate. She won't have time for a break today. New patients are arriving soon, and there's lots still to do. The types of therapy on offer and the other services, she has to sign off on it all. The 39-year-old is from Ivory Coast. Her journey from mutilated girl to self-confident woman was a long and lonely one. Now she wants to help others on that journey. Super. See you later. She set up Les Ochités Rouges, the Red Orchids, in autumn 2020. She gave up her career in the advertising industry to focus on the fight against female genital mutilation. FGM cost me more than 30 years of my life. There are millions of women like me in the world, in the same situation as I was. I told myself I couldn't just sit back and do nothing. I had to set up the association to tell these women that FGM is not a question of destiny. It shouldn't be allowed to have the last word over their lives. I have decided to fight actively against this violence so that I contribute towards its eradication. Hi, how are you, Isabel? I'm well, thanks. You're looking good, as always. Thanks, and you? I'm fine. Isabel Canon is an art therapist. The two women are discussing the plan for today's therapy session. I'd like to bring some calm into the whole thing, involving the body and movement, without talking, nothing verbal. I think that is a very good idea. Words can stir up painful stuff. In my discussion sessions, I make sure that we drink a cup of coffee or a tea together at the end and spend a few minutes having a bit of a laugh or talking about superficial stuff so everyone can go home with a smile on their face. Marie-Claire also steps in when photocopies are needed. The head of the nonprofit will do whatever it takes. Have a good session. See you later. <laughs> okay, good. Let's stand up and clear away the chairs. <laughs> Let's try to feel good, to be proud, to stand upright. With movements and gestures, the women express their pain and anger. It's difficult to put the trauma into words. And for some migrants, language barriers make it impossible. Most have African roots. Others come from Asia or the Middle East. The French health ministry estimates that 125,000 women in France have undergone FGM. Nathalie Kanga is one of them. Like Marie Claire, the 30-year-old comes from Ivory Coast. One in three women there share the same fate. Nathalie loves books. In 2017, she came to Bordeaux to study French literature. In summer, she did her master's. She wants to live an independent life, far from the traditions of her homeland. She was subject to FGM 20 years ago. But she still suffers from the physical and psychological consequences to this very day. You can't forget. It's a trauma that haunts you your whole life. You leave home early one morning with your mum. 
You see your friends. You're happy because it's meant to be a party. No one tells you what is going to happen. I follow my mum because she's my mum, because I trust her. My mum would never do me any harm. We arrive in a big courtyard that I know well. Then you hear screams. They fetch one of my friends. She goes in and she screams. Then she comes out again and she's walking as if they have hurt her. <laughs> as if they have cut something out of her. But I don't know what because I haven't experienced it yet. And when you emerge, they tell you, you are a woman now. That's how it is. It's like that. You hear the screams, the crying, and then nothing. She recently came across the Red Orchids Association on the internet. Nathalie hopes that the free therapy sessions will help her on her journey to a new life. The Red Orchids are based in a quiet side street in the center of the southwestern city of Bordeaux. Nothing special, you might think, but their services are in big demand. In the last 18 months, 250 women have found support here. Emma Berroul is the team's gynecologist. Often, she has to explain to her patients exactly what happened to them. It generally goes like this. Someone with no medical training uses an old razor blade to cut off the external female genitalia without any anesthetic. One in four victims dies, according to the World Health Organization. 25 women work for the association, including doctors, lawyers, and therapists. Together, they discuss what might help best. The program is tailored to meet individual needs. Today, they're talking about Nathalie Kanga. I want to talk to you about one of our newcomers. She told me that she's generally confident that she has self-esteem, but when it comes to her genitalia and sexuality, she feels really lost. Céline, do you think it would make sense to offer her sexual therapy at some point? I think that a sexual therapeutic appraisal would be of interest. The psychologists would have to say when would be the best time. The therapists also discuss the possible benefits of reconstructive surgery. It can help the women to experience sexual pleasure. But the intervention alone is not enough, they agree. First, the women need to acquire a new sense of self. It doesn't matter what reasons they give to justify female genital mutilation. There is one clear reason, the will to control the body and the sexuality of women. You don't have to look long and hard. That's what it's all about. And I would go further still. It's about controlling their lives. And at the same time, the whole thing is organized by women. There's no question about it. There are a few men who perform FGM. But women make up the overwhelming majority. Social and familial pressures forces grandmothers, aunts and mothers to subject their daughters to FGM. In a society in which women are only worth something with men at their side, in which men only marry women who are excised, then mothers have no other choice. Marie-Claire Moraldo called her association the Red Orchids because vulvas resemble these flowers. Red symbolizes the blood caused by the cutting. The association mascot, clitoris plush toys, in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> 
This is Natalie's first foot reflexology session at the association. Marie Chumoje Bilbao hopes the massage will help to release repressed feelings and other blockages. <laughs> Do you know anything at all about foot reflexology? No. I'm going to work with your feet. Je pense que je vais revenir parce que ça fait du bien. C'est comme si ça I think I'm going to come back. It's doing me good. It feels as if she is able to make you speak without you having to open your mouth. And that's saying something, particularly for me. Usually I can't bear people touching me. It was really awful when I saw her head over me. I can't bear lying like that, in that vulnerable position. The session with Natalie was very emotional, as if we succeeded in releasing a blockade. I compare it with the bubbles in champagne, which are captured in the bottle. Via the massage, I released something. Female genital mutilation causes psychological problems that are felt for years afterwards. The women are addressing these themes in their paintings. It's an important step towards dealing with their experiences. The United Nations estimate that 200 million women are affected worldwide. The tradition is not linked to any specific continent or religion. Christians, Muslims, and women of other faiths fall prey. Pauline is also from Ivory Coast. She fled after she was subjected to FGM and then forced into marriage. That's good, because it is your spontaneous expression. Do you see it? It mirrors what you said earlier. In the meantime, I've become able to express myself a little better. I feel more like a woman. It's doing me good. I'm really pleased to be able to do something, to know that women also have the right to be free, to blossom, to love and know what life is. I know that it is not always easy for you. Some of you don't want to be identified. That's understandable, given the pressure from society and your family. You feel loyal to your families. Putting on makeup is normal now for Marie Claire. She has made peace with her body. I had reconstructive surgery in December 2016. I often call it my second birthday. I am a complete woman, a real woman. Marie Claire has an important appointment. She's been awaiting confirmation for a long time. It is about the organization of an event aimed at preventing FGM. I'm going to be late. I don't believe it. OK, I've got everything. The Red Orchids depend on the city of Bordeaux for political and financial support for their campaign against female genital mutilation. They also work together with the regional authorities and the French Women's Ministry. The UN awarded consultative status to the nonprofit organization in 2021. Paving stones aren't easy. I should have done what the women in New York do. Sneakers first, then change into high heels. She wants to build an international network. Her first branch is in Abidjan in Ivory Coast, but her first port of call is City Hall. Mayor Pierre Ormique 
was one of the first people to back Marie Claire and the Red Orchids. We want to raise awareness about FGM, increase the amount of information out there, and do more to prevent it. I would like to talk to you about a number of events we are planning, in particular a big event in May. Do you know how many women are affected in Bordeaux and the surrounding area? No, for Bordeaux we don't have any figures, but for our region. It is the third worst affected after Greater Paris and Southeast France. More than 8,000 women according to estimates. The daughters of these women are also at risk of mutilation. Three out of ten girls who spend the holidays in their parents' countries of origin are at risk of FGM. That's a huge number. The danger is ever-present. That's why we have to keep up the fight. I am acutely aware just what a health scourge it is in human terms. It's completely unacceptable. That's why the city of Bordeaux is all the more eager to help you raise awareness, educate and support. Female genital mutilation also exists in France. It is rare, but it is practiced secretly in a few migrant communities, even though it can land you in jail for up to 10 years and incur hefty fines. One woman arrived at our offices recently very upset. She had heard the daughter of her neighbors screaming loudly. She had heard her father saying, we have to wipe up the blood now. She came to see us. The woman said she was certain the girl had been genitally mutilated because the family come from a country where this still exists. Female genital mutilation existed in Europe prior to the migrants' arrival and was practiced in some countries as late as the 1950s. It was ostensibly a way of treating hysteria and melancholy. The Red Orchids have organized a show in Bordeaux city center. In the old market hall, there's an exhibition of collages and paintings produced during the art therapy sessions. Nathalie wants to take a look. You're supposed to see a clitoris. But it's also a little girl, a little girl of seven, eight or nine years old. That's the age that FGM takes place. That's me, Natalie, with my little dress. Do you know you can't wear any panties after you have been cut? You wear a wrap made from African wax print fabric for a week or two until you can wear pants again. Back in her student residence on the city limits of Bordeaux, here she lives alone. Nathalie's daughters are still in Ivory Coast. Her 11-year-old twin girls risk being subject to FGM. The thought is unbearable. She would like to bring them both to France as quickly as possible, to safety. But how? Her family has already come close to cutting the girls. I got a phone call in February 2020. They told me that my daughters were 10, almost 11 years old, and that I should think about getting them done. I am not in favor of it. In March 2020, I booked myself a plane ticket to fly back and sort the matter out. I went through it when I was eight or nine. I know what it means. I would never inflict that on my children. No, I don't want it. Now her sister is looking after her twins. I think they're safe there for now. 
My sister hasn't had her own daughters cut, so there's no reason for her to have it done to my daughters. Is there any way of getting the twins to France? Nathalie has an appointment with the Red Orchid's lawyer. For many women, Hélène Guérica Batia is their last remaining hope. Entrez, installez-vous. Vous pouvez vous installer sur le fauteuil noir. Allez-y, mettez-vous à l'aise. Bon, C'est la première fois qu'on se rencontre. Tell me, how can I help? I've been advised to ask you what I have to do to get my children over here. They're in Abidjan. I'm studying here. Without any paid employment, it will be difficult to get the girls over here. Family reunion is only possible in France under certain conditions. You need enough income to support your family's need and an apartment. At the moment, you have student status, so I wouldn't advise you to apply for asylum. It is a real obstacle course. It is very protracted and complicated, no matter what persecution you have been subject to. It is much easier to get a residence permit to study or work than to be recognized as a refugee. Nathalie is going to write some job applications. She needs permanent work that pays at least minimum wage to bring her children to France. With her qualifications, she hopes she might get a job in a library or bookshop. Marie Claire knows just how hard it is to build up a new life in France. She doesn't like to talk about her past. She lives on the outskirts of Bordeaux with her partner Jean-Marc Ponger. They met five years ago. In the past, she wouldn't have been able to start a relationship like that. She had an inferiority complex because of the genital mutilation she was subject to when she was just a young girl. Reconstructive surgery helped her put that behind her. In 2016, I met a man who was very interested in me. I didn't feel worthy of that interest. I was certain that he was only interested in me because he didn't know about my genital mutilation. I didn't start a relationship with him even though I was strongly attracted to him. Later, I said to myself, you can't stop yourself living your life. I realized that I had to get rid of the physical stigma FGM had left on my body. Nowadays, Jean-Marc is her family and her nine-year-old son from her first marriage. It is important to Marie Claire to keep her private life private. Repeatedly, she has faced animosity and threats because of her work. She doesn't want her child to suffer. You okay, son? You're winning. I am committed to fighting an age-old tradition. Not everyone is happy about that. But it is my decision to fight FGM. I don't want to drag my son into it. I want to protect him, because I keep getting unpleasant messages from people who don't understand my commitment and think that I am fighting against their values. And yet, she's not fighting against values and traditions, but against a deeply misogynistic practice. Nathalie is meeting her best friend, Carolina. They grew up in the same village in Ivory Coast. Have you heard from the girls? No, nothing. 
for the moment. Nothing. I hope I'll hear something soon. I know that it's difficult for you to be so far away from them. I often think about your story. I think that something like that just shouldn't be allowed to exist. No, it shouldn't be allowed to exist, but it does. I didn't experience that, and no one around me even talked about it. I didn't know anything about it. At some point, I heard people talking about it. It's true that we grew up together, but she is from a different tribe than me. One thing is clear, every tribe, every people has its own ideas about it. At first, I just thought it was her culture. I didn't see any problem with it. Then I did a bit of research and I realized just how much suffering it has caused her. Nathalie is worried about her daughters. She keeps on trying to get in touch. You can talk to the twins. The twins don't have a cell phone of their own. She rarely gets through. She hasn't held her daughters in her arms for 18 months now. Let me see. They haven't been online since Sunday. Marie-Claire is getting ready for the weekly talk session. The women can discuss their problems here, informally as equals. It's Nathalie's first time. Today's topic is freedom. Being free means making your own decisions. These women weren't free to say no. I was uh, genitally mutilated at the age of six. It stayed with me my whole life. When I met a boy, I didn't have any fun. I asked myself, is that it? Is that it? That's why they all want to get married? It just hurts. Surgery could help. But how does it work? I'll show you with this plush clitoris. The tip is cut off, but the rest is inside your body. And that's why a woman who's been mutilated can have a completely normal sex life. I see a lot of Amazons here, female warriors who never give up. We should not allow everything we experience to dictate our lives. You have to decide yourselves. It's clear. Your life belongs to you and to you alone. Clitoris, <laughs> 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 <laughs>